Welcome to the Cloudless Mind podcast about neuroscience and non-duality. In our previous podcast, Scott, we were discussing uh, sexual selection. And I think uh, the conclusion was that sexual selection is actually everywhere. But you as a coach, Scott, I wonder, are people actually aware about their underlying motives for what they do? I mean, why would they get higher up in the organization, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I, I can assure you that this is not the, the uh, quote-unquote reasons they give for what they do. I mean, you know, everyone has a story. Everyone has a, uh, a narrative in their brain in, in which they've created, which probably filters into the sexual selection, meaning that they have created a story that they think will help them, help their you know, help them look good, help their status to some like, but they have no idea what the underlying kind of technology is behind it, right? What's really actually running the running the show. And, and it's not one that I, you know, I bring up, you know, it's not one that I talk about when I'm in here um, with, a, with a client, um, typically because, you know, our minds are so wired and programmed to say to, to have this not be a conversation that is, you know, comfortable for people. True. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and so, you know, I, I don't directly come at it from a sexual selection, but I do have people start to look deeper and occasionally it will come to this point, but really not that often. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to be able to, you know, at least explore this concept and then, and then think about it as it, pertains to uh to business more so i think that that's you know i'd love to be able to go down that road since you're so up on this topic yeah it's funny because i'm doing a, a podcast in the netherlands for 10 years and me and patrick yeah. i'm doing it with him uh we talk about sexual selection all the time and because we got quite an amount of uh, listeners people <laughs> more and more start using the term uh sexual selection so whenever I buy a new car. They're like sexual selection. <laughs> Whenever someone <laughs> is bragging about himself, sexual selection. Whenever someone's writing a book, it's the same. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It, it's just funny that that is the underlying um, motive for people without them being aware of it. And that our neocortex, the latest part of the brain, always comes up with the greatest stories and excuses uh, telling everyone why you do what you do without knowing the underlying motive. So what we're doing here is actually pointing to that underlying motive. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm happy to to know that, and, and happy to have a bit more self-reflection on knowing why this organism called Paul does what it does. You know, I, I completely agree with you. I, you know, I, I, um, I'm, I'm interested in this topic because it, it's so basic to each human being and it's never spoken about really it's never like it's not something that we can we can speak of but i'm curious about even how we would talk about it you know what what would the conversation a general conversation be like i know it's a uh, the the world of sexuality is a little bit more open i, I believe in europe and i've experienced there than it is here because it's more of a puritanical there's yeah. a lot more kind of religion based conversations here or you know theocratic. So, so my question mm -hmm. for you is, um, you know, how would a conversation like this, what's the possibility in a conversation like this? Do you think that there is usefulness in it? Or do you think we ought to just stay asleep and just operate like we always have? Well, in neuromarketing, they're very interested in this because they simply know why we do what we do. So first of all, we want to be part of a social group. And and by that, we can survive. And once we are part of that social group, we want to get a higher status within the group. So it's always two strategies, getting along and then getting ahead. Mm. So a lot of neuromarketers, they first point to you being part of a social group. And then as you're part of the group, how you get a higher status, how you can get the, the best car or the best jacket or could be anything. Mm. So they use it all the time. But this would go, f I think as a leader, you should know things like this. Because then it's way more, uh, it's way easier for you to motivate people or to understand how people collaborate and why they would do that. 
and why someone would have passion. And uh, I, th I think only a few leaders are actually aware of this underlying stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's those that are really interested in human behavior and how they can positively influence based on the way that, you know, human beings are wired. You know, just this past weekend, I read something that was quite disturbing in, in a couple of ways, two different things. One was that um, Facebook as it is in some type of partnership or has something to do with these porn sites, most of the big porn sites that are out there, meaning that you can apparently go to like private settings or something. I, I read this is called incognito where you can browse without being tracked. And yeah. apparently, but what they had said was that's not the case at all. Whereas they are absolutely um, tracking you uh, and they are absolutely able to understand what your different sexual pre preferences are. And they're using that to market to people do exactly what you just said. And even further than that, they, the, the, the article also spoke about Siri and um, how Siri is they have a, a whole department at Apple that listens to your times when you're having sex. It listens in on that, so it knows all the different facets about that around your sexual practices and how the different... And so it's actually listening <laughs> to you. And it said in the what article... What a job. <laughs> well, I know, I know. And, and, and what they said, too, was they said that, that look, we only listen to like three or four minutes. We don't listen to the whole sexual encounter. And I thought... Well, that's really nice of you guys. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't. <laughs> how gentle, <laughs> how, yes, exactly. They said they only need to do that for quality control, and all they need is about three or four minutes of your sexual exploits to get that. So, oh uh, yeah, yeah, it is nice wow. of them. But the, but the fact is, is that if you don't, if you're not aware of this. That's one thing, but we will say that the powers that be are aware of it. They know what runs us. This is going to be the biggest problem, most probably in 10 years, when the artificial intelligence uh, starts uh, dealing and operating with all this big data. Mm. And then our brains are just little machines that are being overruled by a bigger machine. And because you, you, your neocortex will tell you, I, I can... Uh, deal with all these influences and I make my own decisions about what I buy and when I buy it or which porn site I visit, uh, they know that you don't. That's right. They know how that works. And if they're so familiar with your um, your proclivities, your patterns in that world, all they have to do, they can even subliminally flash some image on the screen that will create a little dopamine level that will send you to where they want to send you. Right. Yes. You know, and, and so yeah. they're they're taking advantage of the most basic human function of recreation and procreation and exploiting that in the way that you absolutely have no say so over you. you this this fundamental aspect, you know, th this is sex is what brings down men, countries, empires all the time and so and the <laughs> yeah. and now what's happening is it's getting um it's getting to where you know there's a lot of that going on in the states right now there's there's a whole bunch of stuff you may or may not have read about around these crazy pedophiles and stuff like that all over the place but it's all about the same thing it's all accessing that same banal um pattern that we have as human beings yeah, definitely. So David, we'll first focus on our reptile brain. Okay. So it's it's sex and food, um, and we're instantly focused because that's the way we survive. Then they focus on the mammalian brain. This, it's constantly triggering the rewarding system in our brain. Constantly instant satisfaction, like the the, the nice food and the attention and all that stuff. And very little is focused on the neocortex. So like having a meaningful goal in life, that's neocortex stuff. But most marketing, sometimes they misuse that too. <laughs> they make you believe that you're doing it for some higher purpose. Uh, but a lot of marketers are really smart on doing this. And they just know how the unconscious brain makes all the decisions. They know about sexual selection. They know about the layers in the brain. I mean, I mean, I train a lot of neuromarketers. They all know this stuff. And even when they start using the, the AI, and it's going to be quite, quite dangerous. The government should make rules for this, but 
They don't. In, in what rules? Like if you're gonna if you were gonna enact something, where would you see the biggest danger would be? I, I mean, how is it possible? Like, imagine I would secretly record uh, my uh, neighbors having sex. Mm -hmm. They would put me in jail, you know. But apparently, Apple can give me this machine, and suddenly they're allowed to share all my data every night when you're asleep. It will. It's like 1.4 gigabyte. Man, I tell you, you know, um, I think it is quite tricky. And I wonder, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a time, especially with, with young, let's say young men, young women around that are, that are actually being drained of a lot of their own power. Uh, you know, you know, the, the, the amount of free will that we have is, is microscopic anyway, if we do it all right. And, and then to be able to like have almost like as a puppet move people around based on this, 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 this understanding they have. And, and then what's even more is they, they, they feel the out of control nature of it, right? You feel the kind of the out of control nature of your, you know, your sexual activities. And then, you know, they can even play on the other side of that. All right. How do we take care of that? How do we send you to some place where you can make money off of that? So you're just in this pinball machine of being thrown around by what they're listening to, you know, or, or observing on these websites that you're going to. It's just a, it really is. It's really a fascinating time. It can explain why a lot of people feel the way they do. And it's just, this isn't just sex. It's in much other areas. But this is an easy one to target yeah. because most people won't talk about it. You're not going to talk about this out. Companies aren't going to talk about it. And you don't typically even want to because we've been programmed that it's bad. Uh, yeah, definitely. This is also the reason why such a few people own like almost everything on this planet. It's, it's like... The, the richest 13 families, they are so wealthy and they've got so much power and control. It's like there's nothing we can do about it anymore. It's, it's a done deal. Uh, so, so the only thing is waking up from the dream. <laughs> that's the only liberation that's left. Right, right. And, and sort of, as I say, it's almost like you have to stay in a, a constant conversation. It's one of, you know, one of the great things about our relationship you know, we're, we're many miles away. We've got a lot of different things going on independently, but, you know, we're really committed because we're in this conversation that really works for us being as human beings, right? And it continues to add like a lightness to, you know, both of our existence, at least it does on this end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A and and what, that, what that comes from is a, you know, the ability for us to talk really openly about things like this. I mean, you know, stuff that most people wouldn't even consider, whether it's Anything from a free will conversation to sex, yeah. No, true. So, so two things I want to say. It's like Bill Hicks said, as scary as the world is, and it is, it is merely a ride. And I think that's important to know. Yes. And I think you and I, because uh, we're quite free, like um, if we would have full-time jobs and a big mortgage, maybe we would shut up and not record this stuff. I mean... We're, we're willing to take this risk, so to speak, because we just don't care, yes. you know? <laughs> so, so, yes, yeah, that's, Einstein said everything that's been created that was great was done in freedom, and I totally agree on that. It's, it's so true. I mean, just the, just the idea, you know, here in the States, what they'll call it is, some people call it fuck you money. So basically <laughs> what, you know, it's like you'll say whatever you want, Right. It, it is. It's like you're, you're able to go out and you're not constrained with the idea that if I say something that I'm going to be fired. Yeah. And, um, you know, to some extent, we, we run some uh, risk in terms of maybe someone not hiring you for a talk or a company coming or, you know, one of my clients hearing some of the stuff that, that I'm speaking about here and make some decision to, to you know, to move me out of their world. Yeah. Um, and, and that's always a, a possibility. And our understanding about kind of reality and the dream has us a little bit more you know, willing to, or a lot more willing just to lay it all out there from this understanding, right? Yeah. Well, and, the, the, and a commitment. The funny thing is, Scott, when I started doing my Dutch podcast with Patrick 10 years ago, we were 
we've been open and honest for 10 years about everything. People who listen to it know everything about me. My <laughs> relationships, the ending of my <laughs> relationships, you know, it's, it's like every stupid thing I did. So, but then at first we thought like, oh, if we're going to put this online, then it's the end of our careers. But the opposite thing happened. It's like more and more people. I mean, sometimes we're even uh, with the podcast higher than Oprah Winfrey in the Netherlands. Oh my gosh. You know? Wow. And, and people just love it because it's open and honest. So for a lot of people, it's like, oh, finally, people who just, <laughs> fuck you money, you know? It's yeah. just, they just say whatever they want to say. And uh, so I think for a lot of people, it's it's simply liberating uh, not to be scared of, of giving your opinion. You know, it, it really is, if I was going to say the usefulness, the real usefulness to me is... First of all, understanding that you are being tracked, so you have some some idea that whatever you're doing, whether you you know say you you know you've never been to a porn site, but you have a you have a liars. Uh, what, yeah, <laughs> liars. yeah. I mean, I, I will tell you, I had an IT company like 15 years ago, and I yeah. would travel from company to company because at that time, when you visited a porn site, mostly your computer <laughs> got. <laughs> filled with viruses so uh, right. for, for two years i was taking off viruses from accountants lawyers <laughs> you know and, and then it's like i don't know how these nude women ended up in my laptop i don't know i'm like yeah you moron yeah, yeah so yeah well that's for sure but but it's like like what we're doing i say the other part of the utility is you, you can actually bring some lightness to this Whereas so much of our structures and our society make it heavy and something to hide, uh, you know, I, I'd say that there is a, a real utility in bringing some lightness to the conversation because it is what is. And, you know, it's, it's, it's at play in, in so many facets of your life. And from that, just the recognition of it could possibly, you know, could cut a couple of the bars of your prison cell away so you're, so you're able to, to make... To possibly operate in a way that's, you know, transformed from the way you, you might be now. Yeah. But maybe not either. You know, it's it's a strong pull and it's a very strong conversation that people don't want to have for some reason. So I really appreciate the ability to talk with you about it. Me and, too. So liberating. <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, we have a, a, a lot of fun doing this. So if you'd like to know more about us, cloudlessmind.com, our book of the same name, which you can find there, and our YouTube channel is a great place to go. So, so Paul? Yes. Then a blast as usual. We'll talk on the next one. 